So it's um, a little after midnight. Man, I had no idea it was this late. So uh, heading home. Man, there's leaves all over the driveway. It is really fall. Um, took a bunch of the guys to dinner. Went to, uh, we, went, we used to go to a place called Mia Miles. It's over by uh, the lake, by Paris Landing. And uh, it was pretty good. And then it kind of just changed. Something changed about it. Didn't really know what. Come to find out, um, Mia Miles is a chain. And uh, it's kind of a Cajun seafood uh, place, but they got like some steaks and burgers, you know. It's, it's really probably the best place in this area. It's, it's fun. Um, kind of New Orleans, uh, you know, um, decorated. It's got a, a bar and uh, they can do mixed drinks and, you know, got a lot of different beers on tap and shit. And they got a, a covered enclosed patio, usually live band, usually gets pretty loud, a lot of smoke in the back. We usually just sit up front. Uh, we had a server that was really, really good. And uh, Bridget, she was awesome. And we went there a lot, mostly because of her. And then we went and she wasn't there. And uh, the name of the restaurant changed, but the menu was pretty much the same. But it just wasn't as good. Something was different. So come to find out, the owner just stopped paying the franchise fee. Um, and then changed his shit and let shit. It seemed like they used a different food vendor. And um, just everything was different about it. Same menu different quality different service a lot of a lot of young girls were hired um you'd see a lot of girls just standing around fucking just talking like that irritates the fuck out of me like when i go to a, a like walmart's a good example hey how you doing oh i'm here i want to go you fucking stupid bitch if i was your boss i would fire you right fucking now and uh just shit like that just poor attitude because i i tip very very well for decent service not not even extremely good service but when i have a very good server a lot of times you know we'll tip you know 50 percent of the check so anyways we're going to mia miles or it's i don't remember what it's called but we just always called it mia miles well lo and behold um there's a sign in the drive going up for mia miles just opened so you have the original one which had changed the owner changed the name stop train the franchise fee and you have the one next to it and i said i'll bet you money that dude stopped paying a franchise fee. So the owner of the original restaurant said, let's just fucking open a restaurant right next to his and do it the right way. Cause I'd always heard that the other Mia Miles like an hour away was so much better. And that's exactly what fucking happened. And uh, I heard, you know, I asked, asked around and wanted to know what the deal was. So I asked somebody and uh, I was told you know, the owner did come in and open the restaurant and just use the original recipes and the original, you know, service and used his template that he'd used in his other two successful restaurants. And uh, he was still cool. Like, he didn't trash talk the other guy. And uh, they were at a club one night, and the other dude said something with some trash talk. And so the owner of Mia Miles said, okay, fuckhead, um, your parking lot because the properties fucking touch each other. The new place has an awesome little beer garden outside, covered patio. It'd be great for parties. Has a big fucking party room. Um, it's it's nice. It has a bunch of cabins there. You can stay there if you're you know fishing at the lake or whatever. And uh, it's just pretty cool. It's a neat little area, kind of like what we're trying to do at the compound for you know friends and family when they come into town. And uh, anyways, the owner of the new place still owned the parking lot that the older place was using and that dude the original owner the older restaurant uh, was talking some shit so on monday they put a fence up around that parking lot that he was using and said you have 72 hours to get your sewer lines out of my fucking property so it just goes to show you man when i when i saw that i go i bet that's what happened because that's what i would do if if i had somebody i wanted to you know was trying if i got poor service locally here or something I would go start a business right fucking across the street from them doing the same thing. That's just how I am. I would employ personnel and I would pay them a little bit more and provide just, you don't, it doesn't even have to be a great service, just better than what's there if that's the only thing around. And uh, these guys did it and uh, our server was fucking awesome and uh, we'll be back. Like we, I will take my people there. We used to go there at least once a week and our tab was, you know, five, six hundred dollars usually, which is, you know, a good tab for around here for, you know, ten people. Um, 
but anyways, whatever. So, um, headed home. It, um, Amanda had some dude today, got a pelter wrap, and this has been going on for about a week. Dude got a pelter wrap, and, uh, he says, he sends an email and says, hey, um, I got two problems. Um, number one, I ordered a Typhon Toxic Pelter Wrap, but I meant to order a Typhon Red Thread Pelter Wrap. And here's where the, the always a but. Everything after but is always bullshit, typically. There's a police officer here. He says, uh, problem number two, uh, tracking shows that it was received here at my house, but I don't have it anywhere. So number one, I need you to find out where it is and what can be done. And number two, um, I need you to send me a Typhon Red Thread because I accidentally ordered Typhon Toxic. And my immediate thought is, my immediate thought is, motherfucker, you got the damn thing, you opened it, and rather than just saying, hey, I fucked up, can I switch it? You're just hoping we'll just send you one because it's a hassle. It's a, it's literally um, a $25 part and you used a coupon code. So it ends up being like $16 or so and it's a hassle. Um, it's right up there with the dudes and we get probably one of these a week too. Guys will go, um, hey, uh, I ordered a 1.5 Cobra in you know, coyote, and you guys sent me a black one. It's possible. You know, we ship fucking 2,000 boxes a week on some weeks, and um, it's possible. You know, shit happens. So, the first thing I do when I get one of those guys is I look at their order history, and it's, and usually this is a dude, you know, who's ordered, you know, a, a couple times or whatever. I'll look his shit up. And he will have already ordered a black 1.5 belt. And he's saying we sent him one by mistake. Because he knows we're going to ask for a photo of it. So what I'll do is when that happens, I'll go, sure. I see that you also received a 1.5 black. And you're saying you got one by mistake in this order. So just send me a, a order of both uh, 1.5 black Cobra belts. And literally, like no shit, 90% of the time, we never hear back from the dude. Ever. And then 10%, you know, it's legitimate and we fucked it up. In which case, you know, Amanda will ship him, send him a shipping call tag and we'll ship him his other belt out. Um, and typically if we don't have it, we'll build it, you know, that day or the next day. But it's just amazing the shit people try to pull. And uh, just laziness a lot of times too. Um, asking questions that are clearly answered on the website or fucking are very simple to find out. Um, I get, you know, I got one the other day. Hey, uh, what are the dimensions of your shotgun card? I want to go, I don't know, motherfucker. Take five shotgun shells and fucking put them next to each other. There's your dimension. It's just, it's, it's just fucking crazy. Some of the shit people don't take the time to just fucking, you know, the answer's there if you would just read it. It's just like the dudes are like, I, I got one tonight. Hey, uh, you know, it's like, um, it's been 13 weeks and you quote 12 weeks um, I'm just wondering, you know, when's my order going to ship? And we look it up, and what has he ordered? He's ordered a black 12-gauge micro-rig. What does it say at the top of the fucking mi every micro-rig page? This product is a no ETI item. It is non-refundable. If you order it, it's considered pre-order. By ordering this product, you agree to the above terms. So it says that in a bold font, capital letter font, red text font, bigger than all the other fucking text on the page. It's just that mentality. And I wonder how many guys are just fucking, just fucking lazy and didn't see it. I mean, it's the first thing on the page. It's in completely different text and everything. It's impossible not to see it. So how many really didn't see it and how many are just, you know, fucking trying to, you know, pull a fast one like, oh, I didn't see it. So we'll just go ahead and fucking send it for you. We built... Shit, I don't even know how many. We built over 500 micro rigs this week. Um, last week we built over a thousand bags. Um, this week and last week combined, we built over 300 visor covers. Like, we're busy. It's not because we're not doing anything. 
we're fucking busy shipping fucking orders. And then you get the dudes that are like, well, I think it's, you know, I've waited this long and I didn't know the wait would be. Well, it says no ETA. It doesn't say when I feel it's been long enough or when I feel it's been too long or no ETA means this amount of time or until you get tired of waiting. It doesn't, that's not what any of that shit means. It means there is no fucking estimated time, but we will ship it. It will ship when it fucking happens. And right now what's happening is we are going through the very oldest orders and figuring out what item that needs and pulling that item and building it with all the other ones on order and extras. We just built 308 micro rigs because the oldest order, not 308 micros, I'm sorry, 308 coyote split front chest rigs. A month or so ago, we built uh, black. And then after that, we built multi-cam. And then we just built Coyote, and we built them in that order because that was the absolute oldest order on order with us. And we just built Coyote because the oldest order we had was for that item. Now, when we built it, I want to say we built 70-something of them. We have at least 20 extras right now. So if you want a, a split front 308 micro rig in Coyote, we have them. If you order it, it'll ship. It'll ship this week. They're on the shelf, ready to go. We've got a fucking pile of them. Um, but as far as, like, and this this dude ordered a fucking black 12-gauge micro. He ordered it 13 weeks ago. We've got orders over a year old right now. We're fucking building them. We're addressing them. We have upped production. We have started doing things in a lo much larger scale. You can see that from the photos. You can see that from the videos. The dude's talking the most shit. No, don't even have an order in. They're not, they're just, you know, it's just shit talkers fucking poking those guys. And you know it's happening because when we get an inquir inquiry from one guy, it's followed usually by two or three more of guys with the same item. That doesn't make it fucking happen any faster. It does not fucking, it's not even going to get your shit any faster. All it does is slow us down. He's like, why don't you stop making cocks and make fucking real gear? Well, because fucking, when we do a sale... All those orders come with a cock. We made fucking 700, 800 fucking cocks today that were sale orders. We've got fucking, I don't know, 200 orders sitting right now that need cocks. Skele cocks. Those things are done by hand. We thought they were being stamped. Come to find out the lady that was doing them, the one, uh, the lady that built the very first picture, she was blotting those by hand. We had no idea. We made her a, a fucking stamp and hopefully that will help her. And I'm not, I can give a shit how fast it takes. I don't give a fuck whether you guys get them in a timely manner. It's a free item. We're doing that to fucking help her. And we're going to compensate her for what she's done and continues to do. She's a fucking good employee. But she did that on her own because she thought it was cool. And then she said, oh, well, I'll build them. Just build them, no problem. So, you know, a hundred of them were built, Skelecock so far. I thought she had a template and was spraying them or she had a fucking foam stamp and was, you know, just stamping them. Nope. She was blotting every one of those by hand. Every one of them's original. Every one of them's different. So as far as the cocks, I haven't built a fucking chicken in years. Fucking, I built a 1.75 Cobra rigger belt for a dude came in today. I built it fucking real fast. I hadn't built one of those and man, I don't even know in the last couple of years, probably. Um, but I don't, I don't fucking build orders. I'll sit in production. So just so that I'm on the floor and set the pace and, you know, because I'm there, it just fucking motivates people to work faster. And if they see me doing it, I don't do anything, you know, that, uh, I don't expect my employees to do anything that I can't do. And I don't expect them to do anything that I cannot demonstrate. And if I tell you, Hey, this is taking entirely too long. It's not just based off what I do. It's because other employees are also doing it faster, especially if it is a new employee who has built it for the first time and you have been with the company for years. Like, I don't expect anybody to do anything that can't, you know, I can't demonstrate myself. But I do expect, if I tell you a faster way to do it, I expect you to do it that way. When I show somebody something, especially the kids, well, why don't you do it like this? That is me giving you the option to do what I want you to do without me making you do it. And that that's everybody in your life. 
there will be people that force you to do something a certain way, like in the military and school and uh, I don't know any other fucking job where you have a, a real supervisor. Um, or there'll be people that will guide you into believing it's your own idea. And um, that's just, that's how shit is. I'll just fucking be honest with you and tell you what we're doing, whereas other companies won't tell you or will lie to you or try to make it look differently. But um, it's just like, you know, when we make the post, it's just conditioning the customer. Customers see that over and over. They think twice before they do it themselves. They're like, well, maybe I should go look at what was on the page. And uh, that's the deal. Most, most people asking fucking questions about the product, not all of them, but most of them, the answer's there if they would just fucking look for it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do it myself sometimes. I mean, I, I get it, but that's the real deal.